Oh my God, what an episode we just had. Not only did we get an answer as to who saved Grogu from Order 66, but we also got a clear indication from Bo-Katan as to what she is really trying to do. I was kind of scared at first because the episode started kind of silly. It's been always a complaint when children are involved with Star Wars, but this time around it was handled pretty well, as well as you could hope. There are adults firing their blasters, there are kids fighting with the supervision of adults, and this is the time when Din Djarin deems it important for Grogu to also be involved. I think he saw what the audience saw. While most foundlings were sparring together, being together, he was off to the side. We see that Din Djarin puts a lot of importance into the training and maturing of Grogu as a Mandalorian, since he rejected being a Jedi. He puts him up against Ragnar, the kid that was declared a foundling a couple of episodes ago when the giant monster came out of the lake. That kid, turns out, he is the son of Paz Vizsla, which we find out later. Shooting darts, at first Ragnar wins two points, but all of a sudden, with the encouragement of Din Djarin, who supports him all the way, it is Grogu who comes on top with distracting Ragnar with his Jedi tricks and then shooting three points at him. A slight issue was that, of course, I respect them for not going for the CGI version of Grogu. However, this is when the restrictions of the puppet come to the fold because it seemed kind of old-fashioned the way Grogu defeated Ragnar. Either way, there's a flying raptor who swoops in all of a sudden. It seems like this place has been cursed by somebody because they constantly keep getting attacked and this raptor grabs Ragnar and sends him for his nest. The situation is so dire that even has Vizsla, Din Djarin, and the others cannot follow suit and find its nest because of their limitations on their jetpacks. This is when Bo-Katan proves to be worthy. With her ship, she follows the creature until she locates its nest. We can clearly see that Bo-Katan is taking this seriously. She is starting to become a valued member of the Children of the Watch. Even the armorer kind of sees that. But I was so glad to find out, ever since the title, The Foundling, I knew that this episode was going to be mostly focused on Grogu, who has been kind of absent these three episodes. This one was all him. Bo-Katan, Din Djarin, Paz Vizsla, and the others go with their ship to rescue Ragnar from this raptor. Staying behind is Grogu, and the armorer invites him to come to the forge while while she creates a new armor for Grogu. This is very significant. And the fact that Bo-Katan receives a piece of armor similar to Grogu's at the end indicates something very important. Dave Filoni and Jon Favreau wanted to show us that there won't be just a single path towards Mandalore. It seems that Bo-Katan and Grogu are prime candidates for that. As the armor is discussing how one matures, specifically talking about Grogu, while the forge is doing its job to get the armor guiding the machinery. All those impacts seem to have triggered something in Grogu. In fact, we kind of see that Grogu is really traumatized, and I really felt bad. A puppet made me feel bad, guys, that we clearly see Grogu has still not overcome Order 66 all these decades later. You can imagine how traumatizing it was for him back then if it is so bad now. And just as I predicted in the last video, Grogu goes back to his flashbacks, to the point where we see in the trailer three Jedi protecting him, and we see that clones penetrate through the door. This scene was in fact a mirror image of A New Hope, the opening where stormtroopers get inside the Tanti 4 Clones are the stormtroopers, the Jedi are the rebel fighters, and it seems like Grogu is Princess Leia. And penetrate through the other doors at the hall, start shooting at them vigorously until almost all of them are dead, except for one who protects Grogu and gets him inside an elevator where somebody else will take him. The doors open and we see the Jedi who has saved Grogu. After all this time, after all this speculating, it was Kelleran Beck, aka Ahmed Best, aka Jar Jar. He is back, baby, and he was so 
cool in this scene. Ahmed Best deserves a lot more than this, but this was one of the best moments, I think, that Dave Filoni could have gifted him. After the brutal comments he got from the prequels, I think he deserves this and more. Kelleran Beck, for those who didn't know, he is also called the Sabered Hand. He was a Jedi Master that we first saw in a TV show launched in 2020. It was a small TV show that was focused mainly on kids, but this is the first time that Ahmed Best made his debut as a Jedi Master. We see that Kelleran Beck wields not one but two lightsabers one blue one green and obviously he is much more skilled than other jedi because with his two lightsabers he defeats a lot of clones wave after wave until it was too much with his swoop bike he takes grogu and they escape the jedi temple we see a far away shot similar to how padme saw it from far away the jedi temple is burning the clones are pursuing kaloran back and this was definitely a Attack of the Clones vibes, Kaloran Beck roaming around Coruscant trying to evade the enemy, goes into a tunnel, a train coming, which he escapes in a moment's notice in order to trap the clones. We also get a brief cameo of that plaza that we saw in episode 3, and finally reaching the landing platform where the Nubian starship awaits. This was surprise after surprise in this episode. Now, I'm not going to claim that this was Padme. Padme's Nubian starship. However, if you remember from Revenge of the Sith, at this point, while Order 66 is happening and the Jedi Temple is burning, Padme is on Coruscant because we saw that scene, Padme watching the Jedi Temple burn from afar and not knowing if Anakin is safe. And another thing, in Star Wars, we have not seen any other Nubian starship like this one. So if I were to claim that this is Padme's ship, it wouldn't be so crazy. Also, Nubian officers, this was was so cool to see again all of this this was fantastic and it was beautiful the clones immediately ambush them we see regular clones and shock troopers and while the Nabuans and the clones are fighting this Kaloran Beck takes this opportunity to take Grogu into the starship as they jump to hyperspace where are they going well this is a point of discussion that a lot of fans I see online are making and I'm gonna make a separate video on this because I have my thoughts also what was also cool was to see the aging of Grogu we kind of think of him as the same age constantly but this this time around they clearly put in the work to make him look older meanwhile the B story Bo-Katan and the others arrive at the lair because Bo-Katan is the leader they leave her by the fire only she has the right to do that while bo katan is fascinated by this as they're scaling the cliffside they arrive at the nest but it is paz vizsla who sabotages them because he is worried that his son might have been eaten this is when we find out ragnar is paz vizsla's son we realize that there are three other reptilians baby reptilians that are awaiting for their mother and the strangest thing happens at this point ragnar is vomited out of its stomach so without explanation we understand Understand that Ragnar was in the acidic stomach of this reptilian for a full day and did not die, did not suffocate, did not suffer any injuries, wasn't even wet when he came out. Kind of a silly point there, I know, but I hate it when they don't focus on these details. It is a bit of a challenge, but they ultimately save him. It is Din Djarin who actually saves him, and Paz Vizsla thanks him visibly. This is the way, kind of indicating that their rivalry has taken a new form. It is not the way it used to be. The three baby creatures are brought back to be raised by the Mandalorians, and while bo lost a, a shoulder armor during the fight, the armor takes this opportunity to build a new shoulder pad for bo -Katan, and bo literally asks her for a mythosaur symbol on this shoulder. Then she proceeds to tell her that she has seen the mythosaur. The armor still doesn't believe her, thinks that she saw the mythosaur in a dream. She again reiterates that she has seen the mythosaur with her eyes in real life inside the living waters. However, the armor interestingly does not overreact to this news. She just goes on to tell her that this is the way. This is the way when you walk with the children of the 
watch. So did she actually give her her blessing to go ahead, tame the mythosaur, become the, the sole ruler, the Mandalore? I don't know, it was pretty cryptic and interesting. And the fact that Grogu received a similar armor, same as bo leads you to believe that there is more to this story. These two are gonna come to a head at some point. Both bear the mythosaur symbol. Let me know what did you guys think about this episode down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you enjoyed, leave a thumbs up down below, subscribe for dailies. Now you have an awesome day, Star Wars fans. I'll see you in the next video and may the force be with you. Until then.